I decided to host a little high tea for my friends and I. I thought it would be fun to make some mugs and some plates that are all matching and in the team. But I do want everything to look cute, as I said. So a small handle uh, helps with that. I just finished all of the plates and they are now drying. But now it's time to make some cake stands. So that is going to be fun. I have made a cake stand in the past and I also made a video about that. I made that last year for my birthday, I think. And I threw it in one piece. So I threw it upside down and made like a little rim for the side of the plate. And then also like a higher cylinder in the middle to like have it as a foot standing up, if that makes sense. I will link the instruction video down below where I explained how I made that. But for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And because of that, I've decided to throw it into two pieces. So I will throw one cylinder without the bottom and that I can then place underneath the cake stand. But yeah, let's get started with that. <laughs> There's a little change of plans when it comes to the cake stands that I want to make because I just measured the cake forms that I'm going to use to bake the cakes in. And they're a little bit bigger than I thought. So I do want to make some cake stands that are wide enough to hold a big cake like that. But I have measured it all and I do not have big enough beds to throw them on. So I'm going to hand build them. <laughs> Which is probably also going a little bit faster because I just roll a slab, make it into a circle and then I have the top part of the cake stand already finished. Probably will have a little bit more circle than that. Oh yeah, and I will be throwing the foot that it's standing on, so like a cylinder that's like, I don't know, in my shape, uh, that then can go underneath it. And with some thought I've also decided to make them both in two separate pieces and fire them in two separate pieces and just stack them on top of each other when using them. But yeah, I'm just going to start off with the top part which is going to be like the plate on top of the cake stand so i'm just going to roll out a piece of plate with my little clay extruder that i have here it's a great extruder it comes in three pieces and i can just easily put it away when i'm not using it and just put it in one of my cabinets here so that is great and i'm going to make it on top of this thing um this like foam and it's also made for pottery it is from xeem tools and it's actually used to trim on because you can like put a bowl or plate or whatever on top of it upside down and then trim on it because it's a little bit soft they can like press it into the foam kind of and then you can trim it without it flying away but I personally prefer to just use the giving grip but this is a cheaper option but giving grip works a little bit better because here I sometimes have had that something that was trimming just flies off so that's not great but I'm just going to use this as a mold basically so I'm just going to cut out a piece is this going to be wide enough I'm now looking at it and I don't even think that this plank is wide enough. I'm going to look for a wider plank or how we call that? Plank? Shelf? A wider shelf. I also have this shelf that came with the wheel. That is the perfect size. But the thing with this one is that it's a little bit thinner, which makes the clay a bit thicker. <laughs> I also have this one, which is even thinner, but maybe I can just stack these two on top of each other. Is that the same thickness? It's this, these two together are a little bit thinner than this one on its own. But I think I'm just going for that. Let me grab some clay and then we'll, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> Hello. Okay, this is not fabulous. The lightning is horrible. Give me a second. But I got a piece of clay. <laughs> okay. Um, still not great, but a little bit better. <laughs> Okay, so I have my piece of clay here. I always just flatten it a bit. I never wedge it when I pull it through the extruder because uh, the clay that I use comes directly from the package and in the package it never has air bubbles. So I don't really have to wedge any air bubbles out of it. And yeah, I just flatten it so that it is easier to go through the thing. So I put one piece of fabric underneath it and one piece of fabric on top of it because otherwise the clay sticks to the everything. <laughs> so here we go. With two pieces of wood at the same time. I hope that goes well. I always make sure to pull a little bit uh, on the fabric because sometimes it's, it wants to fold, which is not great because if you get a fold, then the piece of clay is not flat. <laughs> Or 
gorgeous. Is it as white as it needs to be? I would have liked it a little bit wider, but I think I'll just keep it like this. Yeah. For now, I'll just keep it like this. <laughs> I'll just place it on top of here, make sure that it is centered. Then I think it will just turn everything around. Here we go. <laughs> okay, that went quite well. That is nice. And we take this off. Okay, it looks quite good so far. What I now do is just bend the sides a little bit. I was thinking about just cutting it as a straight line, but I kind of like the flowing shape. It's a little bit too much flow maybe. Yes, <laughs> not maybe, <laughs> do it a little bit too much, but I will maybe just like keep it like a little bit organic. I have this little turning table, which makes it a little bit easier to cut it because it's also lifted a little bit. So that's nice, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I have a little knife and I'm now just going to cut off the clay from the rim because there's a little bit too much clay here. But I'm just cutting it off in a random shape, not really anything, not, not too straight, not too straight, just a bit of a flowing shape that I like. Okay, okay, okay. I keep the short sides like as long as I can because I do want it to stick out everywhere at least a little bit. And then we will bend it a little bit more by just Pressing it to the side. <laughs> okay, I like that. So far, so good. Okay, I have a wet sponge here and I'm just going over it to smooth it out, I guess. So it has like little, uh, not really cracks in it, but just some texture. And that just easily goes away when I go over it with a sponge. So that is what I do. With just a little bit of water. I don't want it to be too wet. And I'm also smoothing out the sides just with a sponge uh, in the same way as I do with the top. And I also want to smooth out the rim here that I just cut off because that has quite some sharp edges. But I will be smoothing that out after the clay has dried a bit and it's leather hard. Because then I will also go over it with my... What is that called? Rasp? I'm not sure what that's called. <laughs> I will show you how I do that but I don't do the rim now because I just like to do that when the clay is a little bit harder. What I am going to do now is throw the stand that can go underneath it. Or like the little foot that's... Yeah, I think I'm going for like a from wide to small to wide shape, <laughs> if that makes sense. That just looks the nicest. And I will make it quite wide, I think, because otherwise, as I said, the clay is sometimes warped in the kiln, and like the wider the foot is, the smaller the chance that the clay will warp, and like that the clay stand will become warped. Makes sense? Okay, we'll head over to the wheel and make a nice little foot. I'm also not sure how high I want to make it. We'll see how high I can make it with the random amount of clay that I grab. <laughs> I have a bowl of clay that is 800 grams, but I will make it 17 centimeters wide at the top. Yes, and I think 800 grams will be enough to make it quite a nice height. Also, because it does not need a bottom, so it's just only the, the walls of the cylinder. So that saves some clay. So let's get to uh, the throwing part and I'll give you a closer look here. I start off as I always do by attaching the clay with some water to the bed and then I start centering it. I do this by pressing the clay towards the middle of the bed and then I cone it up and I press it down. And I repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. And then when the clay is fully centered I start flattening the clay because the shape that I'm going to make is going to be quite wide so that's why I made the clay itself quite wide as well. Then I sometimes measure it to see how big it is because I want to make it big enough and then I flatten it a little bit more and then when it is as wide as I want the bottom to be I start opening up the shape. And with this piece as I already said I don't need the bottom because I only need the walls because 
I'm not going to use it as a pot or like a plant or anything so it doesn't really need a bottom. So that saves me some clay so I like to press down all the way down to the bed and then pull the clay towards myself as you can see. And sometimes there's a little bit of clay left on the bed because it's quite difficult to press this all away especially when you're throwing on plaster. So I easily get rid of this by cutting it away with a wooden knife. This will save me some trimming later on after the clay has dried. Then I make sure that the clay is still centered and I press it towards the middle a little bit and then I start pulling up the walls. This is just the same as I always do but now you can pull up from all the way down to the bottom since there is no bottom if that makes sense. So I just do this by holding a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. And while doing this I like to hold the thumb of my left hand on top of my right hand so that I can move both of my hands at the same time. And as you can see I move both of my hands very slowly all the way up to the top. And then when I have the height that I wanted, I measured it to see if it was wide enough, and it was, but I did want the middle part to be a little bit thinner. So I held my hands around it and slowly pressed the clay towards the middle, as you can see. And then I defined the shape by going over it with a sponge again, and I just slowly pressed the clay inwards where I wanted it to be a little bit thinner. And I pulled it outwards where I wanted it to be a little bit wider. And just like that I make it into a nice and flowing shape as you can see. And then the piece is already finished and I just go over it with a sponge to get rid of any water or slip that's on the piece. So that it's just nice and smooth and so that it dries evenly. Then I cut away a little bit of excess clay at the bottom here. This will also save me some time from trimming and it will make it a little bit easier to cut the piece off of the bed. And then I smooth out the part where I cut it off. Then I cleaned my bed and then the piece was completely finished and ready to dry. And as you can see it's a little bit wobbly which I wasn't really happy with but it was centered enough to just keep it. So here it is and I hope to see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.